Shalom. My name is Becky. I'm a born again Christian, a mother of two, and Christianity is fun. I'm a born again Christian, and uh, um, basically my life is all about Christ. And uh, yeah, I'm. I'm oh, karabosh. You know, in my house, we always watch gospel stations. Uh, and how is your prayer life? I pray every day, every time. I listen to whatever God is speaking and I pray for myself. Well, yeah, I pray for my kids. Yeah. My husband, eh, only my pastor can. I pray that in future we'll have a good family, a beautiful wife. Um, praying for someone? I don't think I can, I'm, again, I don't think I'm fit for that. I pray a lot even for my destiny, that God is going to shift the destinies in my life, that I will become successful, that I will get to become wise like Solomon. Oh, shaka. Like there was this time we were in church, and then while we were praying, this lady, I don't know, I think she was possessed or something, she started doing stuff and I was so scared, you know, I had to even move my kids outside because at that point, what do you do? I was even imagining myself praying for her. Sister, what do you do? You see, that's how a pastor actually fits in really well, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, my pastor, yeah, yeah. Have you ever led someone to Christ? I don't see where I have the time to evangelize. Not, on a, not in a bad way anyway, but... Our church does evangelism. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always caught up, caught up in prayer, caught up in, uh, uh, I'm a busy guy. But I know my pastor can, my pastor can. He's fit for evangelizing. Evangelism is for the church. I think, I think you're mixing up some things here because it's, it's not my duty to win souls. Kwani, what's the work of a pastor? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Please, I'm okay being a congregant. I'm not a pastor. I'm happy being a congregant. I'm, I'm fine. I'm not, a, I'm not a pastor. So I don't think... <sighs> what a joy. What a joy. What a joy. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and uh, it's so good to see you. Welcome to Family Night. Absolutely, it's so, so good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're already online, I can see so many of you already here. Uh, please, please, please uh, give a shout out to your DG members if they're not already. If you can't see them representing your DG. By the way, you should be seeing like about four times your DG has shout outs in the chat. Because your guys are there just shouting it out. Uh, let, make your name famous. Make your DG name famous. Uh, my name is Pastor M and I am leading today with the beautiful... Pastor Carol, Pastor Wang Carol. Zhao. Uh -huh. And uh, we have an amazing, we're going to have an amazing, amazing time this evening. Uh, today, uh, hosting with us is the original DG. Yes. Club Fearless. And uh, for those of you who are in the know, you, you have the brief. Uh, Club Fearless is actually the, uh, the, the, the discipleship group that Pastor Karen and I lead. It's the executive pastors and network pastors of Mavuno Church, although it's half the the group because uh, mo many, most uh, half of us are not here uh, but the half that are here we're so looking forward to family night uh, today and uh, for all of you who are visitors uh, first time visitors family night is that time when the Mavuno family comes together every week to just get impartation from the word to connect one, uh, with one another to be together in one accord and to listen to what God has to say to us wow. as a church so we're so glad you're here we're looking forward to this evening my goodness it's started raining in Nairobi, for yeah. those of you who are not from Kenya, it's like, praise Jesus, we're so happy. There's been a three-year drought, and we're praying that the rain is sustained. Uh, so that's really good stuff. So, hey, um, let's see who's in the house. I can see. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure management is allowed to, <laughs> to be part of these conversations. Uh, but uh, Kev the Rev, Kev the Rev. Uh, who is uh, Pastor Mavuno Downtown Network. 
uh, is number one. I think it's his first time ever, so we're going to allow it to happen. Uh, he's so proud of his achievement today. <laughs> and then there's Bob Collins, who's from Coffee Zone DG. I think Coffee Zone has become like one of the more famous discipleship yes. groups. Yeah. So you Coffee Zone guys, you're doing a good job representing yeah. your, your, your discipleship group. Mm. And then I can see, uh, uh, okay, Kev the Rev and Bob Collins were having a thing there. And, and then Godwin Mutai. Oh my hey! goodness. Talk about management. Uh, these guys are rigging. I think there must be some, some insider information here. Uh, Zuberi Discipleship Group uh, and Club Fearless, uh, uh, Campus Pastor and Network Leader for Mavuno Life Network. And then Noel Mutai, come on. Come on. So she, she's following her husband hard. Uh, so we, can, we see you, Pastor Noel. Uh, my goodness, it's so good to see all these people on YouTube. Yeah, and on Facebook, we have Ngugi George from Blossoms DG Kampala. So Facebook, Kampala is the one that has headlines. Come on, come on. That is so nice. Then we have Mbide Mutuko, Salt DG, Rongai. Wow. That wow, is wow. so Mabuna Rongai, good, Mabuna on. Rongai. And then we have Club Fearless, <laughs> Pastor <laughs> Angie Gat Pastor Angie. Kimaru. <laughs> <laughs> and That's then uh, so we have a uh, Carol Hampton, a uh, greatness beckons Hill City. Oh come on! That greatness is so beckons. fantastic. What a nice name, greatness. Greatness, beckons. yes. Eish. Imagine that. Eish, I love it. Mbambazi Dahiro, I think he was also the same person, uh, representing the Great Downtown Network from Kampala. Kel Kelvin Mugambi Wayakiwe in the house. And then I can see Rachel Markule, Ignite, DG, I Mavuno, Kampala. Uh, <laughs> all those three come from the, the downtown <laughs> network. I'll say it for him. They all come from the downtown network. And it's so good to see every single one, one of you. And uh, Ignite, DG is another one of those discipleship groups. Yeah. Ignite, we see you. We feel mm -hmm. you. You guys are in the house. Yeah. And we love the fact that your name is always up there in the lights. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we actually By the way, it's like some, some discipleship groups have owned this space. Yeah. yeah. True. Like you guys in Mavuno, you need to ask yourself, what's up with our DG? How come we're never there? Mm -hmm. Like we're not in the top 10. You know, we should, we should, we, we, maybe DG should just be camping out. Get one of your representatives <laughs> there. Yeah. Make sure in the first 10. Oh. Yeah. We have DG Kisumu in the house. I wow. think this might be the first Amazing. one. That and is so awesome. So that's one of our newer DGs and it's actually in a place called Kisumu, which is a city, port, si port city. Wow. Yeah. Of, of Kenya, and uh, they're actually one of our newer groups that's going to plant a church in Kisumu. Imagine that, and they even have two. There's Ishmael Shem, also from Kisumu. I mean, Kisumu on, is really doing very well over there. I love it, I love there. it, I love it. Kev the Rev is still talking about his podium finish. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, we, we're not going to stop hearing from Kev the Rev the whole of today. Yeah. Eric Kimunyu, good people, Blossoms, DG, and Mavuno 360. Uh, that's another regular group there, Mavuno yeah, 360. Yeah, Mavuno 360. I think Downtown Network, we have to give you guys. Yeah, yeah, let's come give you the job. props. Yeah, come yeah. On. Give you the props. You guys have yeah. done well today. <laughs> come on, come on, Downtown. <laughs> so, so good. Yeah. Well, guys, it's so good to have you all. And again, if your discipleship group members are not in the house, please let them know we've started. Uh, by the way, the reason, part of the, one of the big things that is we've spent a whole day together with uh, mm -hmm. the guys in the room. All the, these are actually the uh, network pastors of mm -hmm. Mavuno Church, the executive team of Mavuno Church. Mm -hmm. And we, we're in the middle of our executive retreat. Yeah. Yeah. And once a year, we go away for about three days and we just hang out mm -hmm. and talk and pray and get ready for the next year. And that's mm -hmm. what we're in the middle of. So we appreciate your prayer. Uh, yeah. for us this week, the yeah. next few days. Uh, yeah. Today was just day one and we had an amazing, amazing yeah. time. I'm so, yeah. so grateful. This, yeah. Love this family. Uh, it's so much fun when you're doing great things with yeah. a great family. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward. So we appreciate your prayer. Pray for us as your leaders, mm -hmm. as yeah. God gives us wisdom, uh, mm -hmm. that God will give us wisdom for the next uh, few days. And of course, a biggie that's coming up. Uh, we just came from Mavuno, Bujumbura. Wow. And what an amazing time we had this last weekend. It was a gathering there, the last of the campus and network gatherings. Uh, and boy, I mean, we went, it was Pastor Karen and I and Pastor, Pastor Jemo, uh, who, who, was who leads that network. And what an amazing time. Yeah, what an really incredible was. time. Really Maybe Pastor Jemo, you could give a shout out to the Mavuno Buju people who are going to be watching this. They're like an hour behind, so many of them will be watching in an hour's time. Yeah. Uh, but give them a shout out. Whoa, so good to see you guys. Glad that you're watching this. It was such an amazing time hanging out with you over the weekend. Uh, we had a phenomenal, phenomenal time. Uh, so welcome to Family Night, Mavuno Bujumbura. Oh, come on. Yeah. So good, so good. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, so we had a fantastic time. The Holy Spirit really showed up. I mean, every gathering was special. Yeah. Every gathering was unique. Every, because God is just doing such 
amazing things in the Mafuno family. Mm. And the gatherings were a whole day of teaching when we just come and spend time talking about fruitfulness. Yes. That was the theme of this uh, gatherings. Uh, some some people in this room attended like seven of the gatherings. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like like well, true so true story. <laughs> <laughs> true story. <laughs> no, they you know what? You hear it over and over and over impartation. and something impartation, impartation happens. And so it's been such a good thing. But now coming up November nineteenth. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's the mega gathering, you know? <laughs> It's going to be amazing. It's like the whole family, the whole Mavuno family is going to come together. Uh, if you're in Kenya, it's going to be at the Hill City um, uh, campus out in Athi River. There's enough space for all of us. So please come on, come all. Uh, bring your family members. Bring everybody in your church. Bring everybody in your DG. It's going to be a phenomenal time. And it's, it's really a time of celebration of the year that has been, but also a time to look forward to the vision that God oh. has given us for the year that is to come. Yeah. And so we can't wait to see every single one of you. It's going to be amazing. November 19th, it's a Saturday. Mark it on your calendar. If you're not in Nairobi, you're not able to come to Hill City, we're actually going to have it uh, beamed. Uh, we're going to have a link that we'll, we'll be able to share out. And we're, 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 we're planning that there'll be watch parties in our campuses. So if oh. you're in an international campus, or you're in a campus out of Nairobi, we're going to we're planning watch parties for you. Oh. And so talk to your campus pastor, tell them, ask them where the watch party is, and make yeah. sure you and your DG are representing uh, when we make a shout out for you. So mm. it's going to be amazing. I'm really excited about that gathering. Come yeah, on. It's wait. going to be such a good time to conclude yeah, uh, the year. The 20, the, one of the most amazing years yeah. of yeah. our ministry it's experience. Just yeah. Yeah. It's just been fun. It has been mm. fantastic. Yeah. So welcome if you're visitors again. We come, usually we come and we have an opportunity to just talk about what God is teaching us as a family and mm. the word of uh, that he's giving us. Mm. And in this month, uh, the, the word has been, how are you really, really doing? doing? Yeah. It's, like, it's like, I think it's a question we're being taught to ask. Yeah? Like in the DG when people say, how are you? I'm fine. Ah, how are you really doing? You know, because it's like a, a question that goes to the heart. Uh, it's very easy to be flippant and not to understand. People are going through stress. People have a lot of anxieties. There's stuff going on, and it's very easy to miss it if we don't really ask. And we're learning that every single one of us has emotional mm -hmm. and mental health issues. Yeah. Every single one of us. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's something that comes. It's an artifact of sin. Oh. It's yeah. something that it's lodged into limits. our bloodstreams oh. uh, yeah. in the Garden of Eden because of our rebellion. Yeah. And all of us, every single one of us, at one degree or the other, and the, 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 the bad news is then all of us have it. The good news is none of us has a position to look down on somebody else because they have mental health issues mm. or emotional health issues. Uh, every single one of us is affected and infected. And the real question is how do we begin to grow and to move out of that space? How do we begin to, to invite Jesus into that space? Because we talked about it last week. The, 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 the mental health profession yeah. gives us a scientific approach Medical to it, yeah. which is not a bad thing. Mm. But there's a biblical approach that I think is much wider, encompasses the medical, but is much wider than that. Mm. And, talks, and, and, and when we begin to look at it from a biblical perspective, we're able to see what hope there is in Jesus. Yeah. And then we had a grand finale this last week, and we really, I mean, we got to a heart, the core of the matter, something that I'm really curious about, something I think that I'd love for us to actually do a whole series about, and that was the issue of covenants. Yeah. And uh, maybe, Pastor Kari, you can just tell us, uh, as we're talking about covenants, because basically we've been going through this series called How Are You Really Doing? And at the end, after talking about mental health and emotional health and some of the issues, we went into a really, went deep into a spiritual element, yeah. and a, a spiritual aspect of this yeah. whole issue. Yeah. And you talked about covenants. Yes, I, I did talk. And, and, and I think maybe tell, tell us why you did that. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, I think uh, as, uh, as I was thinking through and I was praying through this sermon series, one of the questions that came to mind, and especially for this sermon, was why is it that as Christians we lead ineffective lives you know weak and ineffective lives you know we go through problems just like everybody else we suffer just like everybody else so what is it why what is it that is going on mm -hmm. and I think uh, now through this someone and you're just talking about the fact that there is unnecessary suffering that we as Christians go yeah. through that yeah. we're not supposed to be going yes. I think there is some suffering that everybody goes through yes but there's some stuff that is unnecessary and it, it is unnecessary. Just, it doesn't seem consistent with what the Bible says. Oh. Yes. We should be living the kind of victorious lives. Yes, yeah. it does. And so, and, so, uh, and so one of the things then that I, that I looked at as just one of the possible reasons is the whole place of covenants. And the fact that um, in our backgrounds, um, uh, with our forefathers and so on, there were covenants that were made uh, that continue to affect us still today. And when we look at these covenants, uh, they had to do with productivity. 
you know, um, because uh, it, there's a very interesting book that I had read quite a while ago, and it was facing Mount Kenya. And in that book, it just talked about um, the fact that... And this was written by Jomo Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta who Kenya's was our first, first president, president. Who wrote about the Kikuyu culture. Yes, yeah. yeah, he did. And he, you know, he just talked about, you know, just s when it came to productivity, a land, uh, when our forefathers looked, I even the whole thing about rain, uh, when there was drought and you wanted your crops to grow, then you made covenants with your ancestors. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you prayed to your gods you know, uh, to help you with your productivity. Uh, same when it came, there's a funny one that I, th that I hadn't even thought about, but even when it came to attracting members of the opposite sex, you know, you want to get married, you're unattractive, mm. you think, or so you think, and so you go and, uh, you know, you go get uh, fixed, uh, you, you know, <laughs> you go out get a covenant for, for you to be attractive. And so you find that even your sexuality has been covenanted. Mm. And maybe out of that, maybe that's where you're going to see uh, people suffering later on with um, addictions, with pornography, with sexual promiscuity, because that aspect had been covenanted with the enemy. And yeah. he's not going to do, he's not going to covenant uh, works of righteousness in your life. It's works of darkness. And so you'll find somebody really struggling uh, with sexual immorality, and that is the root cause, you know, some of those covenants. Wow. Um, even to do with your health, um, you, you know, when people felt sick, there was always, oh, there's a reason for the reason, there's, there's always a reason for why I have fallen sick. And so again, you go and you're fixed uh, to protect you from evil spirits <laughs> or from diseases. Fixed. Yeah, I wish yeah. I can say it in... If I say it in like Swahili, it's like just you're, you're translating. <laughs> but you're translating. <laughs> 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 Good thank you. Let's make things fixed. Let's make things fixed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, you you just go and yeah. and there are covenants that are made. I, I think in my family, uh, my grandmother had uh, cancer, and so we had somebody coming. She she called for um, medicine woman. They came. They injured their 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 chickens and you know so there were those covenants that were made related to our health so you'll find people falling sick maybe you get cancer you get whatever we try praying you know as believers for healing but there's an altar there's a covenant that is speaking against that healing and so there's that need to break that covenant and then pray for healing and wow. your healing is going to come now this sounds li really spooky. You know, I mean, I'm just thinking about the medical model where you start, you say, okay, maybe it's a genetic uh, predisposition. Maybe there's a gene that makes you weak towards alcoholism or towards addiction, uh, pornography. Uh, in, in the West, they don't talk about covenants. So it's very yeah. easy to feel, is this African spookyism? Mm. Like, is this stuff real? Does wow. it actually happen? Or are we getting back to being superstitious in a sense? Yeah. How did you guys address that? Like for Milton, Pastor Milton, when you preach that, mm -hmm. like, like, is this practical? Is this something people identify with, uh, the whole thing about covenants? I think it's really a practical space because when we started the series, one of the things we were saying is that we are here because of sin. Mm -hmm. And if all have sinned mm -hmm. and we all fall short of God's glory, people have been looking for ways and means in order to cope with mm. how they have fell short. Oh, yeah. So what has happened so in every is, culture of the world, in every culture of the world, people are coping, whether through medicine, whether through spiritual processes, whether through medicine men, whether through witchcraft, as in all these are coping mechanisms to seek control. Mm. So what we are saying is, in our cultures, there are different things that people have chosen to do, probably at weddings. You are told uh, uh, in this particular culture, what we do, there are two uh, goats that are brought. One is slaughtered and another one is released. The one is slaughtered uh, is mm. supposed to be representing the girl and telling her that your blood, your life, is the one that has been shed here. Mm. We've released you. But during these cultures, nobody tells you that you are being covenanted. When you come to my culture, uh, when it comes to circumcision rites, for example, there is quite a lot that happens in those spaces, in the bush. Uh, and in that place, there are things that people are taught, there are traditions that are passed on, there are cultures that are passed on. But again, what you are not being told is that it, it, whatever the covenant, whatever the libation of blood that was shed over that thing, the sins are being transferred from one generation to another. Yeah. And if it is the sins of the fathers that are being transferred downwards, then you may just partake of uh, 
uh, misfortune after misfortune without understanding this is as a result of something that happened uh, through people who went before you. So bas basically what I hear you saying is if you have a very materialistic worldview, then of course it's superstition. Yes. But if you really do believe the world has a, f a spiritual foundation mm -hmm. and that there, there is spiritual reality, because I feel like many times Christians are very mixed up. We believe there's, we, we, the world is a spiritual space, but then our, our worldview is materialistic. So we say we believe it's spiritual, mm -hmm. but our approach is completely like there's no spiritual reality. Yes. But if you really do believe there's a spiritual reality, then you need to understand that all choices that were made historically still have choices. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the reason I'm saying this is because I'm thinking, okay, there's somebody watching this in Mavuno Berlin that says, yeah. we don't do circumcision yeah. rights here, so yeah. clearly we don't need this. Or somebody even in Africa who's saying, us guys are here because we don't have good science. But the minute <laughs> our science advances like the West, we're going to stop talking about covenants and start talking about psychologists. And, and yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think for me, it's being able to say, no, no, no. Part of it is there is a reality, a yeah. spiritual reality. Yeah. And you can't say in one, on one hand, I believe in a spiritual reality. And then on the other hand, you're not willing to accept the consequences mm, of, a, of a spiritual reality. Does and that make sense? Yeah, and, and, and um, I think for the Westerners, they may understand it better when we talk about idols. Because whatever it is that replaces God, uh, you know, we said that we've all uh, sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. And so because of that disconnection with God, then we look for other things to feel, to feel us. Mm -hmm. so, we look, maybe, so we make our relationships an idol. And we're willing to do anything, even enter into toxic relationships, because it is an idol. Uh, entertainment becomes an idol where you know, we're so caught up in whatever it is, or food becomes an idol, or power, or even that materialism is an idol. So when we talk about mm. it in terms of idols, as I what is replacing I God? I is it that in the West, maybe the devil is a, little, a lot more subtle? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so that the same things happen here, but there it's a little more hidden. Mm. And people are still getting into those yeah. patterns yeah. and behaviors and still have... I mean, when we lived in the West, it was obvious people who are going under curses, yeah. people needed deliverance, mm -hmm. but it was often a shock to them. I mean, we met demonized people who yes, are going through counseling. It was obvious. From an African perspective, this one just needs to be prayed Demon. for. Yeah. <laughs> but the worldview was completely different. Mm -hmm. And so we would get, we worked in a children's home where oh a lot of the goodness, kids came from demonized. Christian families and were demonized, but their parents had no clue mm, what yeah. that was about. And so they were not able to help their children. And I remember just looking at it and saying, these people have forgotten their roots. But I remember we were reading a book recently, just even this last week, and you said, oh, these people even knew this. It was a oh. Christian from the West who was writing about the covenants. I can't yes. even remember the exact it, it context. Was, um, but I remember you saying, oh, my God, they just forgot. They just forgot. So it it's was been there in the culture, but they just been. forgot. It has yeah. been. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a, a family in the 1800s. The man covenanted his property to God. Yes. And he disconnected himself from the lords uh, in small L. Uh, that were uh, that had been controlling him, that had been ruling over him, and, and then he covenanted, and it's a foundation that is still like, in existence till mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And anyone in that foundation makes the same covenant that their wealth, that you know, their wealth is um, is is really surrendered to God, which is really what we are talking was about. Was it an American family? Do you remember? It was a Scottish. A family. Scottish family. So we're yeah. reading about this family, and we're realizing even to, till today they still are continuing in the Christian covenant that was made in the 1800s. Oh, wow. yeah. So we said, oh, some people in the West actually know this. Realize. You know? Mm. Yeah. In fact, past time, I love, I love the direction you've taken because <laughs> there are some things that still happen in the West, but because they've been done as a culture over time, probably some of the meanings are not being seen. Like in weddings, the, the fact of people carrying their bride over the threshold, it was a superstitious thing in mm. their culture. They believed if a bride walks into the room uh, on her first night, evil spirits will pursue her. This thing of throwing rice on the bride, uh, it's something we do as a fun thing or confetti, but it was supposed to be pushing away demons and evil spirits from coming upon the woman. When you look at the, the many uh, brides that we have, 
and the clothes that people put on. Okay. It was supposed to confuse the demonic powers as to who is actually the bride. Yeah, the so bride these guys, they, they, yeah, they, they, they so did you're a believe. Bride made your, your target <laughs> your <also>. target. <laughs> they did these things knowing fully well there is a spiritual background and meaning of a life mm. and they were answering it in the way they understood why. Mm. And, and I guess maybe the bigger point is then, even though you don't see it, it doesn't yes. mean it's not there. Exactly. It's just like gravity. You don't see it, yeah. but it exists everywhere in the world. Yeah. There is a spiritual reality. Yeah. And so we talk about covenants then. We say these covenants are true. They bind your children. They bind you. They hold you. They are good covenants with, yeah. that you can covenant with God. And we see that in the Bible. J uh, Jacob, uh, when he meets God and he says, I covenant with you. If I come back safely to my family, mm. I will tithe to you and you'll be my God. And a covenant is set between him and his people. And God fulfills that covenant down generations. He tells Abraham, I covenant with you. I'll bless you for generations. Mm. Yeah. And Abraham is blessed. But there are also curses. And those curses affect David's sins. And there's a consequence that comes down across multiple generations of his family. And so these things actually do exist. And this is what we were talking about this week. Pastor Godwin, you had a chance to talk about on, covenants. Come on, come yeah. on, man. Hey. What, was, what was your highlight about that particular sermon and, and how people responded to it? Yeah, so first of all, from where you um, led us to think through, um, you know, you may assume that there is no spiritual reality, but it exists. Just because you don't believe in it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah. So I realized even as I was, I was preparing for the sermon and as I was preaching that, you know, there is no void. As you said, Pastor, and there is no void. You are either covenanting with the devil or covenanting with God. And so as I was sharing, even in Lifeway, I was led to share my story. I, I don't know if it's okay to share yeah, my story ahead, briefly. Yeah, absolutely. And so... A while back, a couple of years back, our grandmother told us a story about our, um, our clan. Um, <laughs> and contrary to popular belief, uh, we are actually, um, I, I, I'm actually from a heritage of cattle wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> we thought you'd say marathon runners. Marathon runners. That's the positive, that's, that's a generational blessing. But yeah. now they they went as they <laughs> Cattle, cattle runners. <laughs> <laughs> and so our grandma told us and told us um, in, in our great-grandfather's generation, our clan would go out um, to steal cows from the neighboring community. Wow. So there's this one time they went to the land of the couriers, somewhere in, uh, you know, west, western or maybe Nyanza, um, somewhere there. And they stole cows, they plundered the place, they killed all the men. Uh, I think some of, a few of them, a few of the elders survived. And then they stole their women and their children. Wow. So it was bloody. It was those ones for movies. Huh? And so some of those elders actually cast the clan and mm -hmm. specifically pronounced a curse on the boy child and cast all the men in the, in the community, in the clan. And so when our grandmother told us that, we actually realized that we could identify some of the curses in the family, uh, some of the curses in our lineage. Uh, men, uh, you know, not being able to, uh, you know, hold up a, a stable marriage. Uh, and I'm talking about marrying more than four wives, and then none of them were staying together with the, with the man. Yeah. Uh, on average, you have, per wife, you have three to four children, but none of them stay with you. Wow. Uh, all the men, in fact, in my father's side, in my father's home, uh, you know, f in immediate family, only the women were the ones who had stable marriages. All the men didn't oh, have any stable it's marriage. It's, it's the men that were cast. And so we could identify some of those things. There was issues of mental <coughs> health as well in the family, in the extended family. And when our grandma told us that we could now identify that these are things that are effect, the effects of those curses that were pronounced. And so one of the things that our mom did uh, while we were young is to take us to church, identify that this is a problem, but now we need to break those generational curses. And specifically for us, the boys in the family, she kept insisting that you are not going to be like your fathers. You're not going to be like the men in your family. You're going to be set apart. You're going to be used by God. You're going to be men who are different. And that's why I think I'm here, by the way. Otherwise, I'd be talking about three, four wives, which is very ungodly. <laughs> But no, I'm looking up a ship. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're not I'm rustling not stealing them. them. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the bigger <laughs> thing, Pastor Godwin, uh, yeah. is what you said about the fact that that's not the story of 
the other streams of your family. Yes. The, the, the people that your, your, grand, your grandma's line yeah. that broke the covenant, mm. something changed for the men. Yeah. But that hasn't changed for the, the rest yes. of the men that you know from the yeah. clan. Yeah. 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 And, and it's just being conscious of the fact that um, there were effects of the covenants and the curses that were pronounced. And we are now under the new dispensation, which is in the new covenant. And it's what we were talking about. We are in a new covenant and there are things that Jesus did to break the curses, to give us victory. Uh, but it has to come from that point of being conscious, number one. It's a thing for acceptance. You have to accept, uh, you know, some people can actually say, if those are things that were done in my great-grandfather's uh, generation, yeah. what does it have to do with yeah. me? But you see, we are told that those curses go to the fourth generation. So you're minding your own business, you know, doing your own things. But <laughs> boom, <laughs> wife number two. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, wi your wife has explicitly said on the chat, no more wives, Pastor God. <laughs> <laughs> noted, noted with thanks. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah. So, I think what you're then saying is demonstrating it mm. that there is power in this. There is power. And guys, what we're trying to say then is, even as we're talking about our emotional health and our mental health, this is an aspect that we often don't talk about. Yeah. That this is how we end up. It's not my. It may not even be my sin. Mm. It may be somebody else that did this, yeah. but then I get affected, and it sounds unfair. Yeah. Except you understand that you know what? Uh, there's a spiritual reality. It exists, and it affects us. You yeah. know, it's, yeah. it's the physical reality is just as powerful, if yeah. not more powerful than the physical reality. Yes. And if the physical reality, you know how it is. If I'm, uh, I'm a person who is, has certain behaviors, it's easy to pass those on to my kids because they watch me. That's mm. how physically things can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I uh, get hit by a car and then I can no longer provide for my family, my family's future gets affected and my mm. children's education is affected. Physical, yeah. we can tell yeah. very easily. Yeah. You mess up physically or something happens physically, then it affects you. It's the same principle in the spiritual yeah, realm. Yeah. And I feel like then what you guys then led us to do is to, con to talk about the new covenant yeah. and how that works. Yeah. So, so yeah, so maybe, I don't know if Pastor Kara, you want to say something about that? Pastor Mills, you guys maybe just talk to us about this whole thing about the power of the new covenant. What did you teach and what did you see? How did you see people responding? Um, I think for me, one of the things that we pointed out was uh, um, some of these covenants come with lots of curses and baggages. Um, some of it could be like people named a certain name. You can see a consistency of habits and addictions in that line. But Jesus became a curse for us so that we become the righteousness of God. We, become in, we come into right standing with God. Yeah. So whatever was supposed to put us out of alignment with God has been rectified by Jesus' altar uh, uh, of the cross. So we were teaching that because of that, then those curses were hung on a tree. Because the Bible says, cast is the man who hangs on a tree. Yep. So those curses, for the Christian, you need not to no longer live weak and ineffective lives yeah. because a solution has been provided for you. Yeah. And you need to appropriate it for your life. Wow. And when you wow. do, through prayer, then you break uh, those uh, chains of that curse from following you. Wow. It ends with you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, something else that uh, we, we were saying is that Jesus' death broke the power of Satan mm. in our lives. Yeah. And that is really powerful mm. because I, I think, remember last week we said when we understand mental health issues from a biblical perspective, uh, then there is power available to us to break. Mm. Uh, we can break, uh, we can pray to break, uh, even if it's things like bipolar or yeah. depression or, you know, these things that are medically hand, hand, handed, mm. uh, handled, there is power to break. Yeah. Now, and I think we did say, and I think we also said in this sermon that uh, even as we do that, we're not saying you get off your medication. You don't still need to go see your doctor and, mm. until you can feel the difference. Mm. But that power until of Jesus, they verify these until they, they verify. Mm. But uh, that power, it, it's what Jesus did for us on the cross was powerful. Mm. So, so powerful. Breaking the hold of Satan, uh, the power of Satan of our lives. Uh, Jesus giving us his righteousness so that now uh, Satan cannot come and... Um, afflict us again he mm. does not does not have the authority to afflict us mm. again because we are the righteousness of yeah. christ and then um 
And then Jesus' death and resurrection gave us the power to overcome uh, sin, mm. uh, to overcome sin. So I think just understanding the power of the new covenant I- is just so amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so okay. So and you're and say, that yeah. power thing, Pastor M, I think was for me what blew my mind. Eh? Yeah. Because this is the same power that lifted up Jesus from the dead. And we are saying that this is the power that God has given unto us mm. through this new covenant mm. that we can break every argument, every stronghold, every high place that has been written against us. Yeah. So no cord uh, of yeah. cursings uh, would actually overwhelm us simply because this same power is available to those who believe. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Mm. I love it. I think, uh, Pastor Shea, you're going to add yeah. something mm. from your perspective. Yeah, for me, as I was listening, in, in fact, I had to listen to the someone twice or three times wow. just to understand because for me it was so, um, how can I say, it was so freeing, especially for the fact that when you say that we are Christians, but because of not understanding. Mm-hmm. So when, when I understood that it's that power, the power that Pastor Milton is talking about, the power that Jesus has, that's all I need to do. To, to do. It's simple, yet very deep. So me understanding that I'm no longer under the covenant of, the, of my grandparents or whatever they've done, so I'm no longer under those curses of poverty, all those things, I'm no longer under them, that now that I'm in the lineage of Christ, all I need to do is just simple, is to call upon the, the power and authority that I have been given as a child of God. So just calling on it and bringing down all those things that are tormenting me was just amazing. So now I'm able to, every time I'm having maybe those tormenting thoughts, I'm having all those challenges, I'm able just to say, look, devil, you don't have any authority or power over me. Because in fact, I can even say, Jesus actually made a spectacle of you. So there's no longer, you no longer have power Mm -hmm. over me. So it is so freeing, it is so, Mm -hmm. it just makes life simple. So it is simple yet so deep. And I love Jesus because of that, of the way he simplified this thing. So he says, whoever is under the covering, the, under the covenant of Christ, mm-hmm. who has agreed to go into the lineage of Christ. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is to call upon him, mm-hmm. call upon the blood of Jesus, and you're free. Yeah. Then how, how good is that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and I think, I remember once, uh, Pastor Jade of South, because uh, uh, we've, we've prayed these prayers before, so in Mizizi, mm-hmm. and um, I, I think I remember her just saying, in Mizizi we have those prayers of affirmation, where we say, I'm a child of God, and there are verses that, there are many verses, that just uh, talk about uh, different aspects of our Christian life. I walk victorious. Mm-hmm. I'm a child of God. There is now no condemnation for mm-hmm. me. So it is, it's, it's now affirming those truths in our lives, uh, because even after we have gone through you know, these deliverances, uh, we will still be assailed by doubts. I mean, it doesn't mean that the enemy will not mm-hmm. try to come back again yeah. and, and take us back. But we resist with, the, with God's word mm-hmm. and what he has done. We have to resist and, you know, affirm, make those affirm, even if it's memorizing those verses. Mm-hmm. Not even if it, it is actually memorize mm-hmm. the verses and tell them to yourself, and eventually you will experience the victory. Wow. Mm-hmm. Pastor Angie, I mean, just what, what you watched as well. Like, wha- I love the fact that you and Pastor Kara are also both medical health professionals as well. Like, yeah, what's your perspective as a Christian as you're thinking through this? What, did, what was your take out? My main take out is, I think for me, the thing that blows my mind all the time is that we don't appropriate the blessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. I think we walk many times accepting struggle defeat. and defeat mm. and so we say fine i have this struggle i have this pain but accepting this is not god's will for me and then appropriating it so i think what she talked about and even what pastor carol is saying right now taking those scriptures and placing them wherever you are so i remember there's a time in my life when i was very young i think i was a young adult i would write scripture about who god says i am everywhere i put them on my windows i'd wake up and i'd put little stickies and say, I'm the apple of the Lord's eye. Come on. I, the, you know, that thing of the Lord is my shepherd. He will lead me and he will guide me. Yeah. He is my refuge, my rock and fortress. Until those words became my life. Yeah. Right. Because I think that the voice of the enemy is so loud. And I think you need to find a way to make that word come alive yeah. to you. And then like you said, Pastor Carol, understanding this is the ultimate blood covenant. Mm. There is nothing, Mm. there is no one that can separate you from the love of God. So I don't know how it is to help to get people to um, 
even for myself i keep reminding myself nothing and no one no demon what mm. there's no demon that can stand in the way yeah. of what god has planned for me but we have given so much power to the enemy mm. so to say i'm going to take it back by any means necessary mm. i'm going to take it back i'm going to get up at 4:30 yeah. and i'm going to pray yeah. i'm going to read this word until it becomes my life yeah. i'm going to believe the word of god that my family myself we will be free and walk in the freedom yeah. mm. and so what i like about what pastor carol said and even how the prayers were broken down because they were so sweet mm. <laughs> i love that it 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 takes it step by step there's a victory one step at a time and i think that many of us expect it's like a magic thing you know mm. one day and i'm ah, i'm free like cinderella mm. Mm. i'll just be glorious walking into the sunset but it's a battle day by day step by step i like that how the israelites took the property um their property jesus or god t- spoke to them and said it's one battle at a time mm. yeah it's one but he said i won't give it to you everything it might overwhelm you he said it's one step at a time mm. and so i think for every one of us it's to say right now we're crossing the jordan come on but the the land is ours yeah, right. victory is yours yeah. health is yours yeah. wellness for your family yeah. you're going to have a blessing one step at a time And so don't give up the fight. Keep getting up for prayers. Mm. I keep going to church, keep reading the word, mm. receive that word and mm. believe that healing. Mm. I yeah. love it. I th- I love the fact that you're saying we have to appropriate it. Mm. It's yeah. it's there because somebody might say but Jesus died for me. Why am I having to do anything? Memorize scripture. But why am I having to memorize <laughs> scripture? He's already died for me. Why am I having to fight? But just to understand there is a place for me to own. Yeah. Uh he died for me, but now I have to own that death. And that's how I begin to cover myself in that way. I mean I always think yeah you find I I had this story about a, a person who was in the street somebody got them said hey I want to I want to help you took them home cleaned them up gave him a whole room full of suits uh, and nice clothes and the next day the guy he found the guy again in the street and the guy is like why why are you dressed like this I've given you a whole wardrobe he said I don't want to make them dirty so I left them there <laughs> it's like they're yours So Jesus has won this victory already for yeah. us, huh? But many of us we leave the suit at home because we don't want to yeah. wear it. Yeah. He can't wear it for you. Yeah. You get. So in a sense you have to actually this prayers we're being taught. Mm-hmm. And we t- you you're so right. This prayers are in Mizizi. Yeah. 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 This prayers are in Simama. Yeah. yeah. This prayers are in this series. Every someone in this yeah. series. Yeah. But your pastor won't pray them for you. You have to own them. Begin to understand like Pastor Godwin said this is what my family did. This was where our issue was. Yes. So begin to understand what patterns there are in the family that need to break. and then be able to say we're going to win this battle. Yeah. Mm. And the battle is not always won in a flash. Yeah. Many times it's a war where you win one battle and then you have a setback but you keep going forward. And so I think for me if I'm in that space, whenever I'm in that space, and uh, um, for me I always have the generational mindset yeah. of mm. look, I may not be able to completely finish everything in in my time, but by God I'm going to pass it on to the next generation right. better than what was passed mm. on to me. Yeah. Mm. So yes, there's going to be a s- I might still struggle through my life with some issues, but part of what I'm saying is it ends with me. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's not going to my children. Mm. So yes, I may I may have to struggle with some things, but you know what? I'm going to fight and keep fighting and keep fighting because mm. there's something called sanctification, mm-hmm. yeah. which is God's word cleaning me mm. and rewiring my mind. Okay. So by the time I'm handing it over, I'm not the same person. It's not coming to me the same way. I'm not passing it on the same way it came to me. Mm. Yeah. So that appropriation is mm. so important. So that's why I think this, the prayers were so sweet. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, I'm fighting yeah. the battle. Mm. I, I, Pastor James, I'm going to throw you under the bus here because you preached a powerful message at Hill City oh, and on. just talked about how your own health issues have been challenged. You talked about your mental health challenges. Yeah. and the fact that you're a pastor who has struggled yeah. with mental health with depression yeah. and you've done it for many years and how many times you've prayed and it hasn't gone hasn't away gone. yeah but then how does this word about the covenant and yeah. and, and this battle how does it speak to you yeah. by the way I was so moved <coughs> with your message and I said oh my god you speak differently from from me mm. because you're saying pastor you know you you could say you didn't say this but mm. you could say pastor is preaching this mm. from his knowledge i'm preaching this from having lived it yeah. Yeah. i've walked with depression all these years yeah. um yeah so what would you yeah would um you take me? <coughs> so i guess part of what it's meant for me and i love that uh what a big part of what pastor carol was doing was refocusing us on the scripture and the truths like pastor angie is saying mm. and what it's meant for me is i've had over and over to define whether i actually believe the words uh so that then uh, by god's grace i have gotten to the place where 
I believe the word of God in spite of how I'm feeling today yeah. and how I'm doing today. Mm. Uh, and so I wake up and I declare that God is Jehovah Rapha. He's my healer, mm. even if he hasn't healed me yet. Wow. And I declare, I'm asking you to heal me. I know you can heal. In fact, I have seen it. I mean, I've prayed for people and they've been healed. I don't know and why it, <laughs> it hasn't wow. happened for me yet. Wow. Sorry about that. I think we're in the middle of something so profound. I even told Pastor James, hold on, because I think this is going to deliver mm -hmm. uh, some people. So welcome back. Uh, we can see you guys. We can see you, Noel. We can see you, Eric. Send the link to your DG members if they're here, mm -hmm. uh, if they're not here. And sorry about that. Uh, sorry about that little uh, mm -hmm. hiccup. So, um, yeah, maybe we'll just uh, keep going and then as people keep coming back. Yeah. But we were just talking about the fact that, you know, I just pa asked Pastor James this question about how, how is he processing this? Mm -hmm. Because um, I, I, I teach this, and Pastor Caro, we teach this as, as people who've been trained, as professionals. As, it's not like we haven't gone through covenants mm -hmm. we, I mean, and, and had to deal with them in our own family. Mm -hmm. But it's a very different space where you're talking about mental health and you're saying, I have gone through this myself. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not talking about this from what, from what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about this from this is my experience. I've lived with this. Yeah. And how have you processed what we're talking about tonight with covenants? And yeah. 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 Um, so, so, so for me, what I've had to do is to, um, I, I say to somebody, you need a, a stronger foundation for your life. The foundation needs to be stronger than how I'm doing today. Wow. And so for me, uh, it's really what Pastor Angie was saying. I've had to learn how to make the scriptures uh, that foundation yeah. so that then I can say to God, your Jehovah Rapha, uh, even if you've not healed me or even if I haven't been healed personally, I have seen God heal people. And so I have faith and I can declare that uh, that, that is God. Uh, I've mm -hmm. learned when I'm, you know, feeling, uh, you know, when I'm at my lowest and I'm wondering where is God? Have you forsaken me? Are you not with me? I've learned in that moment to come and to tell God, even now I'm declaring that you're good. I, mm -hmm. I can't see it yet. It's not how I'm feeling. Uh, but I know that you're good because that's that's what the scriptures tell me, that yeah. you're a good God and you're a faithful God. Uh, oh. So I think a critical thing, perhaps for me, the foundation has really been the scriptures. Uh, Pastor Angie is talking about really being in the word. We've talked about that here. And I have certain scriptures that I know God has given me that are scriptures for me. Mm. Now that's a firm foundation. Wow. I can come back to God and, you know, I'll declare, uh, you know, verses in Psalm 16. Lord, you have appointed me my portion and my cup. You have mm. made my lot secure. The wow. boundary lines are fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a good inheritance. Mm. I have memorized them because they then become a foundation for my life yeah. in spite of how today is going. Yeah. Um, perhaps the second thing that happened for me is that I, I sort of got a, a shift in perspective. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul in Second Corinthians talks at length about the suffering that he had gone through. Uh, but I also found that, um, I think it's in verse 4, uh, chapter 4, verse uh, 17, uh, where Paul essentially says uh, that our suffering, whatever suffering we go through, he, he, he sees three things in suffering. That number one, our suffering is temporary. Number two, our suffering is light. And number three, our suffering is purposeful. Mm. And, you know, he says for the, uh, for the suffering we go through is light, uh, for, for we go through light and momentary, momentary. afflictions yeah, yeah. that bear for us a far greater eternal glory. Oh, and on. essentially he's saying that our suffering is light. And, you know, when I, when, I, when I preached at Hill City, I said, is Paul looking down on your suffering because, you know, your pain could be significant and the challenges are significant. Uh, and, you know, when we read Life's Paul, we can tell he went through major, major suffering. So he's not looking down on anything we're going through. He calls it light uh, because he's looking at it in light of what God is doing, in light mm. of what God is accomplishing through that suffering. Mm. And therefore, he's able to say the thing God will accomplish is of eternal glory. In fact, yeah, it says yeah. a far greater weight of eternal glory. Oh, That's why he can say it is a light affliction. Why, why does he say it is temporary? What does this mean for the person maybe who was born? Are with a disability and they live all their life how is that temporary it's temporary in light of eternity uh, because you you know even 80 years here is a very small fraction of okay, eternity but perhaps the most significant thing is that uh, he says that there's a thing it is producing yeah. and what that says to us is that god really loves us the, oh. the suffering he allows us to go through he's not a sadist he's not just yeah. looking to watch his children suffer. Yeah. Uh, really, the only reason he allows us to go through it is that he has a purpose for that suffering. Yeah. I have found that, I, I, you know, I said this to some friends when I was asking them to pray for me 
uh, because I knew I would be sharing the sermon and, and this message. And it's a difficult conversation for me to have. And I said to them, pray for me because this conversation is, this is the hardest thing for me to talk about my mental health. But I don't know why, if there are many reasons why God allows me to go through this, but I know at least one reason. And that reason is that it makes it possible for me to reach a certain level of ministry in the area of mental health wow. that I couldn't reach without it. Mm. So at the very least, I can see it's purposeful. Wow. I can see that, 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 that there's a way I can speak to someone who's in the situation that I'm in and they can find hope, Amen. no matter how heavy it is. Yeah, yeah wow. so that's... Hey. Wow. Oh, on, we Pastor love you, James. Pastor James, and we're yeah. so grateful you're Thank part you. of this family. Wow. Yeah. And uh, that you're able to just share with us in a way, or to share even with our church, in ways that not, nobody else on this team can. You're able to just get to a level uh, because of your own uh, space. Yeah, okay. and, and, and I think I, as, I'm hearing, as I'm hearing you, then I'm saying, yeah, this is where we are. We're saying, number one, understand you have authority. That God wants you to live a fruitful life. Uh, and part of that fruitful life might be saying he's going to help you completely deal with this issue so that it's out of your life in your generation. And as you break those covenants, as you re-engage with a covenant that is a bigger, the higher covenant, that God has abili the ability to heal you completely and break this thing completely so it ends with you. Those patterns end with you. Yeah. There are times when the Lord allows these light and momentary troubles, as he has, Pastor James has just called us, to endure and to continue for a season. Mm. But even then we have hope yeah. because of eternity. Yeah. And then secondly, for me, I also say because of generations. Yeah. That you know what? I, my, for my children, it will be better than for me. Yeah. You know, because I'm waging war consistently. Yeah. And, 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 and so it's just understanding that this is a broken world we live in, as we've said. The reason we're facing a lot of these things is, our, is the brokenness of Adam and Eve that has gone on to the brokenness of ancestors. Mm. And some of these things are not just magic fixes. God loves human beings so much, mm. he's allowed their actions to have consequences. Mm. That's what we need to understand. Whenever we wonder, why can't God just snap his fingers and get me out of this? God loves us so much. He's, that's why David says, what is man that you're mindful of him? Yes. Like, how would you give human beings so much? What does that power mean? It means we can actually harm the next generation. Yeah. Mm. And that there are significant consequences. Mm. And yes, God will help us with the consequences. But many times he says, but that's the free will I've given you. Mm. And now well, let's, let's, let's help you work within that. But the reality is you didn't start at the same level as somebody who didn't have that. Yeah. Mm. But here's the good news. Mm. Jesus came to redeem us. Oh, come on, so and yes. that when we put Jesus in our bloodline mm. and we begin to own that covenant and we say, for me and my children, we want to pass that on to our children as well and disciple them, mm. every generation gets better. Every generation. Bigger every day. Better mm. every year. Mm. Uh, this is what God wants for our families. Yeah. Now you led us in some prayers uh, mm. to, to just break mm. yeah. this. And I think the prayers are online for anybody who missed them. And, and, and you guys saw some things happening in your churches as you prayed mm. for people as well. I know Pastor Kara, you also prayed for us online. Mm. Yes. And yeah, you want to say yeah. something about the prayers? Yes, I think the prayers, um, the, the prayers were really, uh, first of all, we did the act, which was uh, the way that we've been praying at 4.30, because I find that um, when, when we adore God, if we come, sometimes we may be in such a difficult situation uh, there's things that are going on around us that can be overwhelming. So we always must start with adoration. Uh, we must always place God where he is because then uh, uh, our situation then gets its rightful perspective. It mm. stops overwhelming us. Uh, so we did confession, we did uh, thanksgiving. But then in the supplication, that's a time when we confessed the covenants that were there before. And then we did prayers of restoration. And the prayers of restoration were really affirming uh, these cases, these issues that we've been going through, that has now been reversed uh, because of the new covenant that we have with Christ. Mm. And then there were prayers of restoration. And the prayers of restoration is well, if there is poverty, that has been broken, now there yeah. is prosperity. Yeah. Where there was illness, that has been broken, now we have health. Yeah. And so those are the prayers of affirmation that we are saying. We need to appropriate those so that we can enter uh, into that space of victory, um, that space of freedom. And then after that, we made a covenant. We renewed our covenant with God, where we said we're covenanting with you. Mm. I think um, God works through covenants, and he's very formal about it. Mm. And I just feel that sometimes as believers, we, in our relationship with God, it's like a come we stay, you know? Where <laughs> there isn't, there isn't uh, that formality, there isn't 
you, you see, when, when you formalize something, there is security. Yeah. Mm. So when we formalize our relationship with God and do it according to covenant, there are things that covenant, God covenants to do for us. Mm. He covenants to protect us. He covenants, there are covenants that he has um, given us, we can now appropriate yeah. them yeah. of health, of prosperity, of whatever. So when we now covenant with him, we know exactly what we're covenanting with him about. Yeah. So that was what their prayers were about. I love it. Wow. And I know that we saw a lot of results in our churches. Yeah. I believe there's a lot of freedom that is happening mm. in our congregation because of this series. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's interesting. Last year we did the whole, what was that series we did? The, we did Offense. Yeah. This year. Oh, this year. Oh my gosh, what wow. a year it's yeah. been, yeah. man. Yeah. It's gone so far. It feels like, what? That was this year. Yeah. So we talked about Offense and we broke Offense. I think a couple of years back we did the Simama series and we just broke again. Mm. And what we're doing, I, I, be like, I feel like God is every time we're going through this. It's a progressive thing. Yeah. So yeah. own it. Wherever you are at that yeah. place, pray those prayers. And what are you doing? You're, you're learning new tools to clean out that bloodline, to clean out your... your, your mm. So by the time you're passing this on to your kids, they're in a different space. And that's really the vision. Now, Pastor Carol left us and I think our pastors challenged us to say, join the 430 prayers. Mm. Yeah. There's some things, by the way, you get encouragement from hearing other people pray. Yeah. And I loved how you taught us how to pray adoration, confession, thanksgiving, yeah. supplication. Because that's what we pray every day. Mm. And what you're teaching us is if this is an issue, you know, you can actually pray for your mental health, for your emotional health using the ACTS model that we use as a church. Mm. And it's a very effective way to pray every day for yourself and prepare. And I've heard you talking to our kids about it mm -hmm. and just applying this message when in the different issues they're facing in, in college mm. or at work mm. and saying, okay, this is how we're going to pray ACTS. As we're praying at church this morning, Use this to pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. so, so join the 430 prayers. It's a powerful place of mm -hmm. agreement. And I want to just rejoice and say I've seen so many of us. Mm -hmm. Like all, all our groups have grown. All our prayer meetings yes. have grown. I mean yeah. the numbers yeah. are just exciting yeah. to see the numbers of people mm -hmm. who are just praying. Mm -hmm. Keep praying. Let's keep joining. Keep inviting those who are not benefiting from the prayers. This yeah. is a great place. Even for outreach. Even for people who don't go to church. Yeah. Invite them into this space because I believe it's a miracle space. Number two, join a discipleship group. If you're not in a discipleship group yet, you must join one. Because mm. again, it's that place where we love each other and we accept each other as we are and we walk this journey towards healing together. I think even this group here, we've helped each other a lot. Eh? Yes. Kuna mambo which... I think if not for you guys, me, I have some mental health issues that you've helped me to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> There's some anxieties. And I've been able to just find acceptance. Yeah, and I feel like that's what God wants us to have, is a family that accepts us and walks yeah. the journey yeah. with us. Mm. And then lastly, just commit to your church. Commit yeah. to following. Mm. Commit to being a, a disciple in the, co in the space that you're in. Mm. And let's watch Jesus lead us all to healing. Mm. Guys, I think that... Um, Man, time time's actually gone, and yeah. uh, I can't believe the hour is Just actually like over. Wow. Um, but amazing. this has been okay. yeah, what a shock! I mean, yeah, it's shock. Like, yeah, yeah, the hour is over. But but yeah, thank you so much for just this conversations. These great comments. Thank you guys for all the comments you've put out here. Uh, let's keep the conversations going in our discipleship groups. How do we support each other? How do we really keep our groups real? Because I think that's what yeah. these conversations are doing. Yeah? Yeah. They're giving us the freedom and the permission to have real conversations in our discipleship groups. I call it the Kairos moment. Sometimes we start talking, and as a discipleship group leader, maybe your job is you're trying to get everyone to talk. Mm. Maybe that's not the agenda of the Spirit. Maybe somebody has an issue and starts to break down. or start, You can tell it's moving them. That's a Kairos moment. Mm -hmm. Just ask the question, why is this such a powerful thing for you? And maybe that's a moment God wants us to mine. And let's get deep and really find out how we're doing how can we support each other as we walk this journey towards being whole in Jesus? Mm. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask a, a good pastor, Kev the Rev, <laughs> uh, who today has been uncharacteristically reflective. No, today is, hey, this, this, this gentleemen are the <laughs> super deep. Um, you know, I've just been blessed hearing them and their stories. So, yeah. Yeah, so maybe just speak a blessing over, over Mavuno and, yeah. Specifically pray for us that God would expose and open our eyes to whatever covenants that could be in our families. Yeah. And by the way, sometimes they're very small things that mm. we think are small things. We excuse when we find our kids are always arguing. These two yeah. kids never seem to. And we say, oh, that's just sibling rivalry. Actually, no, 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 no. You need to actually do your exploration. We yeah. found out that there was actually a pattern like that in our family mm. that we had to break. And the amazing thing is when we broke it, boom, it stopped. Mm. and it stopped we were just saying oh it's just normal kids always fight uh -uh. you go and then you find your your siblings did the same mm. your aunties did the same and you, all of a sudden you realize 
these patterns. So we want to pray that God will just open the eyes of our hearts, show us those things that are affecting us, and then help us understand how the new covenant gives us the, the strength and the freedom to break those patterns. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's good. I think um, just to say that a covenant, I, I, you know, I believe is an event then a process yeah mm. so like i made a covenant to my wife and now i leave the process of that Come covenant on. and yeah. so it's words and sometimes maybe in the simplicity of the words you feel ah it's not enough but you as you leave it you realize god is actually making everything come to pass so i want to uh, uh start with uh, just a verse that you know we can anchor on or remember as even as we pray over this uh, romans 8 37 downwards that uh, no, in all things you are more than conquerors. You are uh, the blood of Jesus that made you more than conqueror over any covenant, regardless how big or how small uh, that was formed in the past. Uh, through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, uh, neither the present nor the future, uh, nor any powers. Do you hear that? Nor any powers. Uh, powers on. of your ancestors, powers of darkness, powers of you know co principalities, uh, things for, uh, done in the past. No powers, uh, neither heights nor depths. Whether they were made in mountains, whether they were made in valleys. Come on, man, you are more than that. Um, uh, neither air, anything else in all creation uh, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate covenant uh, maker and the uh, ultimate covenant uh, keeper. Come and on. all we need to is to take the covenant take it take it it's yours it belongs to you yeah. uh, to all those who believed to all those who received him he gave the right to become the children of god you're in a new family uh, and that family is blessed that family uh, has no generational issues that family is cleansed uh, you are grafted into a new family uh, uh, and there's new you know you're under new promises and new covenants uh, all the same and so heavenly father thank you for anyone who've watched through this family night mm. uh, people who uh, maybe they come and for some people it's clear as day uh, the covenants that they've had to deal with oh god for others maybe it's not because it's not something in their front view mirror they're having to discern it oh god but for all of us to walk out of this not with fear but but with conviction of the victory we have in Christ Jesus. And to walk that daily, oh God, affirming the covenant that is in you, affirming the blessings that are in you, affirming the, the freedom that is in you, oh God. And so for those who uh, it's clear as day and they have to break it uh, so that they can remember the event and live out the process, oh God. I want to pray for that blessing, oh God. For those who maybe it's not as clear as day, Lord, to live with the joy of knowing that you're breaking you're breaking, you're breaking. And as you bring things to perspective, oh God, they'll even be able to uh, uh, affirm your freedom over everything in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. And maybe some things we've accepted as, you know, life or we have accepted as part and parcel of our, of our lives, oh God. But to be aware that some of those are generational, some of those are covenant things and we can be able to break them in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. And now let your children walk free. Let your children be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Marriages to be set free, my king. Uh, our families, uh, uh, you know, different generations to be set free uh, mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. And out of this, oh God, we will be those who form a covenant with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. And that will see generations of those who love you uh, to a thousand generations being blessed because we are among those who love you. In the mighty and matchless name of Lord Christ, I do pray and believe. And all of us said, Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 On, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Kev. Uh, guys, uh, we're so excited to have walked this journey with you, to have talked with you this evening. Uh, enjoy your times in the discipleship groups. Uh, let's speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Let's encourage each other. Let's love one another. And uh, let's just walk this journey. I believe that God's intention is that we will be a spiritually and emotionally and mentally whole church. Mm -hmm. And that we're going to walk with each other, uh, bear with one another, and help each other cross that line. Uh, remember, again, put on your calendar, November 19th, the mega gathering. It's coming up. And uh, we're entering into November, so next week, new series begins. And I can't wait to just jump into that. It's going to be exciting. Uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. From us all, Club Fearless, DG. Bye. <laughs> hey. <laughs>
Shalom, my name is Becky, I'm a born again Christian, a mother of two, and Christianity is fun. I'm a born again Christian, and uh, um, basically my life is all about Christ, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, sh You know in my house, we always watch gospel stations. Uh, and uh, how is your prayer life? I pray every day, every time, I listen to whatever God is speaking and I pray for myself. Well, yeah, I pray for my kids, yeah. My husband, eh, only my pastor can. I pray that in future we'll have a good family, a beautiful wife. Um, praying for someone, I don't think I can, I'm, again, I don't think I'm fit for that. I pray a lot even for my destiny, that God is going to shift the destinies in my life, that I will become successful, that I will get to become wise like Solomon. Oh, shaka. Like there was this time we were in church, and then while we were praying, this lady, I don't know, I think she was possessed or something. So she started doing stuff, and I was so scared, you know, I had to even move my kids outside, because at that point, what do you do? I was even imagining myself praying for her sister what do you do you see that's how a pastor actually fits in really well you know yeah so yeah my pastor yeah yeah have you ever led someone to christ i don't see where i have the time to evangelize not on a, not in a bad way anyway but our church does evangelism and uh you know i'm i'm always caught up caught up in prayer caught up in uh, uh, I'm a busy guy. But I know my pastor can. My pastor can. He's fit for evangelizing. Evangelism is for the church. I think, I think you're mixing up some things here because it's, it's not my duty to win souls. Kwenny, what's the work of a pastor? Ah, thank you, Jesus. Please, I'm okay being a congregant. I'm not a pastor. I'm happy being a congregant. I'm I'm fine. I'm not a I'm not a pastor, so I don't think. <sighs> what a joy! What a joy! What a joy!